And you're one of the most well-respected television shows that are out there. It's just so consistently excellent writing, and a lot of our readers look to your scripts to learn how to write just compelling dialogue. Can you talk a little bit about the process in the writer's room, how you guys make the dialogue so sharp? Um, the dialogue is really something that uh, a lot of it, the scenes work around a single line. A lot of it, I have to say in the end, I'm sort of the person who does a lot of the dialogue. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's the icing on the cake because you want to learn to move the story, but it's, um, all you have to do is just, my best advice for people about writing dialogue is don't let the character, this is very specific because it's script magazine, right? Don't let the characters help each other through the scene. Everything works on conflict. So when someone walks in, someone should say to them, hey, how did that thing go? <laughs> they should have their own agenda, and the other character should have their own agenda. And that conflict makes it, makes it spark. That's the thing that I think is the most important, and I was taught that. I didn't know that inherently. So I, I pass that advice so hard. That's great advice. Another thing that I think makes Mad Men such a superb show is the subtext. There's so much going yeah, on believe, that believe isn't that. said. Can you talk a little bit about how writers can learn to get subtext into their scenes? Uh, it's, it takes a long time and you have to have a taste for it. Um, it's a style of writing and it's in Shakespeare a lot and it requires, actually more than anything, it requires production. You know what I mean? It's one of those things that's not always obvious on the page. That people seem confused and they're not listening to each other. And what you really want to do is make sure that the audience knows what at least one of the people in the scene already knows. So if that information is out there and then the person can lie and pretend like they don't know it, that's how I was taught what dramatic irony was. And don't 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 assume the audience is stupid. Don't keep explaining it to them. That's really the watchword of it. And subtext sort of comes along. And then the thing I do have for my writer's room is you have to have a really well-constructed story. It's really, really the key. And you know what? That's hard to do by yourself, and I respect anybody who can. It all comes down to story. A oh, uh, well-constructed story, which I have the best people, I think, working right now in my writer's room helping me construct these stories and bringing their personal lives into it. And, you know, letting, you know, I'm always afraid to be too on the nose with things because I do want to respect the audience and I'm embarrassed by things being too obvious. But, so I, I'm always sort of backing off and then, and then you have the subtext and it becomes drama. It's one of the things I like about a lot of the movie nominees tonight. It's one of the things I love about Breaking Bad. It's one of the things I love about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You know, it's just one character knows something and they go in and talk to another character and the other character knows something else and they have a scene where they don't bring it up. To me, that's real life. We can't wait to see what your writer's room comes up with next. Thanks, me too. <laughs> Thank you very much.